Hi, everybody. It's Ray, otherwise known as Life and Vibe. And today's video that I'm doing is really going to talk about the video that our friend Foodie Booty recently released regarding her being sick and tired of being sick and tired. And as anyone who has followed this content creator has been aware of, is that she seemed to disappear for a number of days. Obviously, a lot of speculation was out there as to why she was absent from YouTube. Uh, everybody had seen that she had kind of had a bad little bit of... Um, history there with the camel and slipping down the stairs and she had been swimming in the pool she had been telling us about a potential skin lesion i believe um she had been swimming in the pool with the lesion there had been discussion that the pool was in open air with the window and that birds potentially had been flying in and uh pooping in the water. Uh, there were the cats from the street that she picked up and handled as well. She had also mentioned she had had a recent lab result that indicated she had proteinuria, uh, otherwise known as albuminuria, which basically means um, she was spilling protein potentially from the unmanaged, uncontrolled type 2 diabetes and a number of other a uh, problem she had. So she went in my head, basically. So we're obviously uh, going to listen to and break down the health um, symptoms she gives during this video. Um, going to talk a little bit about her also potentially sad fishing along with it. Um, I'm not saying that she's not doing well, um, but obviously... When it comes to Chantal, you never know what she's quite doing. So we're going to kind of look at three different things today, uh, primarily in regards to um, two symptoms that she talks of. Um, and one of the incidents, obviously, with the camel spit in the eye and <laughs> the other about the um, sores inside of her nose. We have a lot to unpack. But anyway, I did want to just let everybody know um, I'm going to throw up some fair use. And while I do that, I'm just going to explain a little bit about who I am. So I am currently a licensed registered nurse here in the United States. I'm also in graduate school studying to be a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. So I do encourage everybody not to really be bullying people. Um, I try not to necessarily bully her, try to hopefully be, this is education information, but obviously I do kind of get my opinions there sometimes. Um, I do not treat or diagnose. This is all just speculation. I am only providing, as I said, a little bit of sometimes, uh, wit and humor, sometimes sarcasm, <laughs> sometimes roasting because this person has a long history of neglecting her medical care. And uh, just always want to give trigger warnings with the content that I discuss and often these content creators discuss. It can get into things, especially with foodie around uh, eating disorders. It could get into things about her mental health and just obviously her general health topics altogether. And if you do like this type of content, I always say, you know, make sure to subscribe, hit the likes do all that good stuff. I certainly do appreciate it. And we do live stream and other reactions too. So yeah. Um, so Foodie came in uh, with what was known as an update. Um, the screen was black, as you can see. Um, so I'm trying to kind of just uh, make sure that the... Uh, <laughs> gave it some idea of interest. So we just have her blank in the seat, <laughs> which I thought was kind of cute. Because that's kind of what she's giving us. So the fact that um, I don't know if she has something that has meant that 
Salah has wanted to keep away from her because he thinks she's infectious. <laughs> and we are going to look at MERS, um, which is associated with camels. Um, and she's been told many times to keep away from the camels that she potentially could expose herself to zoonotic infectious diseases. And she is somebody who is already in very poor health and does need to make sure she is cautious. She is in a foreign country. She probably does not have travel insurance for health. She is in a situation now in Kuwait where potentially they are starting to crack down a little bit on people and where they're living and just, you know, keeping an eye on accommodations. And supposedly there are um, indications uh, through news sources that the government is starting to ensure that the family housing is only used by families and not by single people. And uh, part of the crackdown is enforcing uh, electrical and water shutdowns, which I would never want upon anybody. Obviously, that's not sanitary. Um, and so there's a lot going on. And she is Canadian by nationality. Um, but she did go to Canada and then kind of left her um, health care that was provided there, even though she has multiple comorbidities, uh, including unmanaged, uncontrolled type 2 diabetes, which I had mentioned. She also has uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which goes under a whole other name now, and I keep forgetting it, so I'm going to have to learn that acronym. She has, again, I mentioned about the problems with the kidneys, which we've always warned her about. I understand she may have an enlarged heart. She's had two pulmonary embolisms and has been non you know, not been able to maintain a dose of a anticoagulant type medication in order to prevent any further. She does a lot of long haul flights. She appears to have retinopathy and neuropathy and has complained, oh, of her um, sometimes having um, eye issues. She does not seek dental care. She has no gallbladder. She's already had a close call with cancer and had to have a hysterectomy. I mean, we could go on. So this is not somebody who's healthy. She does not exercise. She overeats and has all types of language that she uses around her um, EDs. And uh, it can be very triggering. So anyway, with that said, <laughs> I do wonder if Foodie is sad fishing at all, obviously, because it's a black screen. It is is the first video she has released in an extended period of time. It is obviously a short video, so she doesn't make any money from it. Um, what's the purpose? Is she just wanted her audience really to know? Um, it's hard to say. Um, and why she's not seeking medical care, if she really is feeling these types of symptoms, then it's baffling to me as a healthcare provider because some of it could be really dangerous. Um, and I think it, it should not be ignored. Um, so yeah, let's just go over to Foodie. Let's take a little listen and then we'll take a look at some of the different things. Like I said, we'll get a little bit into the weeds on it. Um, video is 10 minutes. Oh, she did make it long enough for monetization. I thought it was shorter than that, but it's 10 minutes. Okay, my bad. <laughs> All right. Okay, Miss Chantel. I'm going to speed her up a little bit because obviously we know she speaks slowly. Oh, it's not the subtitles. We're going to put the speed at 1.25. Just always wanted to highlight that. And again, this is education informational purposes only. I am not treating or diagnosing this person at all. I'm sure most of you have been waiting for this. Um, I apologize in advance for the quality of this video because um, I don't really have the energy to edit, even put pictures up for you. I just don't, I can't. So um, it's not gonna be edited, so there's gonna be a lot of pauses and stuff like that. Um, well, I'm alive, barely. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, 
I think it was, yeah, the 19th, maybe around noon, I started feeling really dizzy and nauseous and like I just want to sleep. So I went to bed and it just kind of went downhill from there. I had chills, fever. I don't know if you guys have ever had a fever dream. Oh my gosh, they're so weird. So those were fun. Um, I would wake up drenched in sweat. Um, that's still happening, with waking up drenched in sweat. Um, I haven't eaten like anything in, since the 19th, except for... Okay, so... I just give a heads up here. I obviously want to interrupt so I can be addressing this video in fair use. So she's giving out quite a lot of uh, symptoms here. So I am obviously writing everything down. Uh, the reason being is when we go to look at uh, some of the clinical features of two different things that I kind of wanted to potentially highlight that could be um, things that she would want to be um, concerns about or things that I would be uh, potentially if I were going more into the clinical side of medicine um, as far as uh, physical health rather than mental health I but they, they, they all link together so it's you know but anyway <laughs> um, I just want to kind of see uh, you know what would I start sort of trying to do my my analysis obviously you know, I don't have blood work. I don't have a physical assessment of her. So I'm just literally going off and I'm not diagnosing or treating. Okay. I'm just kind of listening to it and thinking if I were her practitioner, what could I be potentially suspecting in what she's trying to tell me as uh, where I could go in this little puzzle. But like I said, this is just education. I tried having like water and then I tried having water with salt sea salt and lemon and that's just too gross and i know i'll throw it up so i only threw up once but the nausea is bad <clears throat> um i had a few berries like fresh blueberries those were pretty good but i don't have really much of an appetite but i'm gonna try for energy sake to have something healthy just even a few bites because i want to try to get the energy to go see a doctor <clears throat> so um i'll have to keep you guys updated on what happens at the doctor so um i think this has been the most sick i've ever been in my life honestly uh i don't know how to explain it just like headache dizzy the nausea the chills the fever um being thirsty i know you know it's coincidentally i get sick right after i go see the camel again and it spits in my face um i don't know if it's related to that it could be but usually with camels it's um, you're at risk of getting Middle Eastern Respiratory um, Syndrome or, or MERS. It's a form of COVID, which attacks your respiratory system. And mine is okay. I mean, I'm heavy breathing a little bit now because I spent I spend most of my time in bed laying down with my CPAP. And yeah, like 24-7. Um, I have so Okay, so for the sake of fair use, I'm going to interrupt her. Um, so yeah. So we're getting quite a lot of information here. Um, obviously, she does seem to concern that she was by the camel. Um, and some of the symptoms, we'll take a look. Obviously, like I said, we're not treating. Um, she seems really, uh, you know, we'll take a look at, you know, the idea of sad fishing too. I mean, we're going to take a look at all of it just because of who she is and kind of unfortunately. But we haven't heard from her since. So... Yeah, it's interesting. And obviously, were she in Canada and not feeling like 
this or feeling like this, sorry, she would be hitting up the healthcare system in the emergency room because she never has a primary care. She is somebody with a lot of chronic conditions and she never has a primary care. She just is living in a foreign country on a tourist visa, kind of thinking, oh, yeah, you know, like she's 20 and she's nothing to worry about, which is far from the truth. It's inside my nose that are really painful. Oh, okay. I don't know where they come from. Mm. I don't know if it's from the CPAP or what, mm. but I've had to like just, you know, try my best to just rest. I've just been sleeping, honestly. I didn't even have the energy to answer people, like family and stuff like that. I answered... I did, I did answer them eventually, but like for the first few days, first couple of days, I was like out. <clears throat> so if you didn't, if you message me and you didn't get a response, it's nothing personal, or just, you know, not well. So I, I don't even have the energy to talk. And I mean, this is where sadly, and not to be kind of bringing this in, were she properly married to this gentleman in Kuwait and her family felt comfortable having a relationship with him? He would have been speaking to him, them about how unwell she is. And then potentially, you know, if she wasn't somebody known to be sad fishing, unfortunately, and we'll take a look at what that is. And it's been a term that started to get more prevalent, especially in the social media context. Uh, her family member would potentially maybe come out and help take care of her until she could get back on her feet and get home to Canada. But if you're contagious with anything... Probably the best thing at this moment is you just remaining where you are. That's probably why Salah not near you. Um, and uh, you're going to have to mask up when you go see that doctor. That's just my recommendation. Explain to everybody. So that's why I'm doing this video. I don't know when I'll be all right. I don't know if I'll have to go into the hospital. Um, I hope not, but I have a feeling that I'll need to probably get on some fluids or something i don't so, mean to laugh i'm sorry yeah. i mean i'm sorry i did not mean to laugh when she mentioned fluids but that's obviously the treatment that she generally gets in canada and i can see why because she's not been eating or drinking so i don't mean to laugh but she is at a place where if she really is this sick and we'll take a look at some of this stuff then she is going to get very unwell and potentially be more in need of healthcare services the longer and, and more at risk at some catastrophic things potentially happening uh, and so it is just unfortunate that she has if she is this ill and I don't want to doubt somebody but we'll, like I said we'll talk about that it is potentially disastrous for her health-wise not a good place to be and everyone's warned you about it and you're strong headed and bull headed and you won't take any mind to what anybody says because you know better than everybody i've just been in bed praying like praying and praying and praying until i fall asleep and you know asking for mercy and help to feel better You know, and promising to take care of my health and ask for forgiveness for damaging my health the way I have. Taking it for granted, like a joke. I don't care if I have an eating disorder or food addiction or whatever the part of my language, the fuck it is. That's <clears throat> something I have to take control of. I hate, I hate when people are like, you know, it's not your fault. You don't have control over this. Like, I mean, people like in some programs and some beliefs about how to tackle binge eating, that you're powerless over it. What if that's been my problem the whole time? Is thinking I'm powerless. So I'm going to start trying to eat healthy small small amounts maybe some soup something like this vegetable soup i don't know 
And um, I have to talk to the doctor about all that stuff because, uh, yeah. Mm. So we're going to get into probably Kubler's five stages of grief because she's certainly probably worked her way through these um, and uh, she's probably halfway in between it. So she's definitely bargaining because she's talking about uh, – praying <laughs> so she's trying to bargain like i'll do better or i'll take better care of my health you know all of these different things so she's got you know just a lot that's happening within this video that's quite interesting from a mental health perspective as well i just want to make sure i'm eating the right things and i think i'll go see a different doctor this time <clears throat> for another opinion you know uh so but at least i have a bit of appetite back which is kind of a good sign but i'm still so lethargic and tired and i just want to be curled up in bed one minute i'm hot one minute i'm cold but i gotta go out i know it but i need a bit of strength so i'm gonna try to like i said get something super healthy there's a lot of healthy food services here that make really clean healthy diabetic friendly food um clean is a marketing term there's no such thing really as a diabetic diet per se it is just recommended you have portion control you understand the amounts of carbs that you should be aiming for at each meal and knowing what foods give you carbs and making good choices from there it's just getting smarter about understanding the foods that you put into your body. So it's just a, a different mindset, if I hate that word in some ways, but of changing to how you approach your food. And at the moment, you probably should be on a brat. Diet. So I'll just maybe have something enough to get some strength. And then Salah will take me to the doctor. Mask uh, off. I'm sorry I'm talking like this. It must be annoying to listen to, but this is all I can give you right now, honestly. I'm so depleted. Well, I mean, you usually do at least an avatar picture. I'm not sure you could have had a picture of something. Julia, I'm not I'm sure. But, you know, obviously the black is very significant to uh, mortality, funerals. You know, it's more dramatic having the black so just think about that there's always that element with chantelle this this is performative in some way not saying that she's not unwell but there's a performative nature of being this dramatic with just a black screen i weighed myself uh <clears throat> two days ago and i was like 152 kg mm -hmm. All right. And unfortunately, even if she is, you know, dehydrated and losing water weight and not eating her usual calories, she's still probably, it's probably 252 kgs. <laughs> That's probably more accurate. <laughs> Times that by 2.2 pounds, 252. And we're probably sitting closer to her actual weight. Just say. I think she scrubs off 100. Uh I'm not saying that as like a victory. I'm just telling you in relation to, you know, the weight loss and being sick. <laughs> it's not in a healthy way. So there's nothing to celebrate. Mm. Anyway. It's funny because I was saying the exact same thing about having to be on antibiotics for a month and two antibiotics that were very strong and were very uh, damaging. Sorry, my nose is a little itchy. Um, damaging to my intestinal system so i've been on probiotics prebiotics i continue on a pre-pro mix at the moment uh for 30 days after completing these courses i am feeling much better i did lose a lot of weight for somebody who was already my size um about 10 pound it's just funny that it's just this, this part is very reminiscent to a conversation i recently had thank you junebug Let's restart Chantel. She's almost completed. Then we'll take a look at a couple of things. Thank you, Chantel. I mean, um, Junebug. That's an update for you. Okay, thank you. 
I'm sorry that I worried so many people. Um, I can imagine how worried some people were because, you know, my health is not good. So, and, I mean, yeah, it coincidentally happened right after the camel incident. Uh, everyone's been saying things and you've, even your subs and your audience when you were in Canada multiple times after having returned to Kuwait. And so I think, you know, hindsight is always, uh, you know what? So, please. The last time I got sick right after the camel, it was more of a flu, like respiratory thing. So, uh, we'll see. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. Sorry, my dog was, for some reason, she's just, I don't know if she's getting allergies in this time of year, but she's being, my dog is being very performative. So I'm trying to get her just to give me a moment. And, and I'll keep you guys updated as, you know, as often as I can. Okay. Let's just end this real fast because it always ends up. All right. So yeah, that was the sad fish that Chantel gave us. <laughs> so anyway, oh, Yes, let's take a look at um, the mirrors that she spoke about. So I'm going to bring this page up. So let me share the screen with that. This is from the CDC. Obviously, I'll put all the links below. Obviously, I'm not treating or diagnosing. These are things that she mentioned during a video. I am obviously a licensed registered nurse. I do have a year of my Master's of Science in Nursing, uh, working to be a nurse practitioner in psychiatric mental health. So... <laughs> I um, just want to preface that I'm not treating, diagnosing, etc. Just have to get the disclaimers out. I know it's repetitive. Okay. So she spoke of the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, MERS. And as it presents clinically, and again, it is caused by the uh, MERS with the coronavirus, uh, which she was correct on. And it's a wide cl clinical spectrum. Sorry of illness let me just see how this looks on the screen oh it's too small sorry guys let me get me smaller than that bigger there we go sorry about that <laughs> i do apologize um let me also have a sip of my beverage so i can um read clearly okay so as i was saying obviously mers it is the middle eastern respiratory syndrome coronavirus that's what causes the syndrome Okay, and there is a wide clinical spectrum of illness in patients with this uh, particular syndrome having been reported. And so the infection means that they can be anything from having zero symptoms at all to actually having quite a nasty respiratory illness that could result in death. Um, and that is obviously the most severe cases. And so what they're stating is it's mostly reported with children and adults of all ages. It can be primarily in older adults. Um, if they are having to go to hospital, it's because they already have existing medical things that are going to make them more likely to have a severe illness. And we do know that Chantel at 40 years old does have a number of different uh, comorbidities, especially with the unmanaged, uncontrolled type 2 diabetes, um, previous history of pulmonary embolisms. Um, she's complained of her kidneys. There's potential that she has an enlarged heart. There's just a lot of things going on that would put her at, you know, potentially more of a risk of getting a more serious illness than somebody who is her age and healthy with no morbidities going on. Okay, so... There are now, um, and per, per this uh, page being uh, published, that the death rate of these to the World Health Organization um, is 35%, which is uh, a decent amount I have, I, for those who are hospitalized or just the global cases. Oh, wow. So that's about over a third of those that have been reported. Sorry, I'm doing, I'm sure I get my statistics right. Uh, over a third, uh, 35% um, is the rate of, of death. And that's pretty significant. Okay, that's not, uh, that's a pretty uh, significant amount of, 
uh, that uh, percentage, let's just say. So what could be some of the signs and symptoms? Um, so this, they, she, this is obviously somebody was having a fever, which, uh, Chantel did mention dyspnea, which is trouble breathing. She didn't say that, but she did say she was using her CPAP more. There are questions about whether she keeps a clean and hygienic CPAP, which we do question if she's cleaning daily, which if she's on that CPAP and then she had something like this type of respiratory illness, and she's persistently using that CPAP and she's not using good cleaning techniques for that device, it would be actually potentially more dangerous to be on the CPAP than beneficial just because of the, how filthy it could be. I just don't, don't mean, but they do have to be kept very clean in order because you obviously you're breathing all this stuff in all the time. It's like having um, anything that's moist and you just keep having moist air go over, over time, it's going to build up mold. So you do have to keep them very clean. Um, uh, she didn't mention anything about a cough and that seems to be one of the symptoms of third symptoms. She did mention the chills, the rigors, you know, that means, uh, like, uh, having, uh, let me see. I can't even remember what rigors are now. So I'm going to make sure I look it up. My mind blinked on what rigors exactly are because it's not quite having muscle ache. Um, suddenly feeling cold. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's good to know. Always learning something. Um, so suddenly getting cold. So you just suddenly you have these chills and you suddenly feel cold. Now she did speak of having chills, chills and fever. Headache. She did speak of having a headache. My algae would be muscle ache. Um, she didn't speak of having any muscle aches. Um, she did not speak of a sore throat, corosa. That's not something I'm familiar with. So let's look up this term. See, I have to learn all the time too. Um, let's see what it means. Uh, inflammation. Oh, this is interesting. It's a, it's a inflammation of the mucous membrane in the nose. Okay. Caused by cold or hay fever. Okay, so she did talk about sores in the nose. Okay, um, sorry, I'm getting a. The, 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 <laughs> I have a cough. I apologize. Let me. <coughs> <coughs> I meant to stop my video. Hold on. Apologize about coughing. I'm, um, <laughs> suddenly uh, the allergies are very bad in this area, and now my eyes are watering due to. Um, protective cough. She spoke nothing of a cough. Uh, she did talk about uh, feeling dizzy, having nausea. Uh, she didn't mention having any vomiting or obviously diarrhea or abdominal pain. So those were ones that she did not mention. Um, so she has some of these actually. Um, not all. Um, obviously, they would do a chest radiographic finding. Because um, they're going to take a look at those lungs and see if anything is causing any opacities or densities. Um, and they're going to look for anything like pleural effusions. So I think she would start to talk more about potentially more of the respiratory. Um, she talked about the fatigue, which doesn't seem to be as mentioned here. Not to say that people would not feel tired, but it just doesn't seem to be something. So... It's interesting. Anyway, if you did happen to have uh, to go to an ICU, and if you leave it too long, anything that's like that, and you have a history of other types of illnesses, obviously it's not good to let it go. You shouldn't be waiting in the house and, you know, a sort of bargaining to make sure that, as we talked about with the Kubler-Ross stages of grief, you should not be bargaining with trying to get better. I mean, you need to seek medical care. You can't say that you feel bad for what you did not do in the past. You kind of need to address what's happening in the present. Um, so if you have any type of history of a fever type upper respiratory tract illness, um, I don't know if she's ever been admitted for anything of that nature. I know she's had pulmonary embolisms. Um, I don't know about respiratory tract illnesses with a fever. Um, that could lead quickly to pneumonia. Um, you could have, um, uh, inflammation, 
of the of which uh, an inflammation along with the the pneumonia um so that sort of inflammation of the lungs um you could have uh, arts like a respiratory distress um you could have what they call a refractory um you know decrease of oxygen um that's that's the refractory is not good <laughs> Uh, obviously, respiratory failure is not good. You could have other types of uh, lung problems, no, a, a, an acute kidney injury, um, low blood pressure. Um, you could have inflammation of your liver. No, and septic shock, which is a bloodstream infection. These have all been reported. That sounds terrible. <laughs> Doesn't sound good, foodie. Um, this could happen after five days of an exposure to somebody who's infected or a camel. Mm. So she was down for four to five days before she talked. So um, she said it happened on the 19th. And um, I'm saying she put the video out a couple of days ago. So... I guess that was a few days after the camel because it says here it can range the incubation period anyway from two to 14. I don't know. Um, obviously, they would have to take a look at the lungs um, from what I'm saying. Oh, there's laboratory findings as well. Obviously, they if they're hospitalized, they could be there for four days. If they're critically ill, they could be in the ICU for a bit. Oh, they're going to look at some type of... Um, to see if you've got lowering of the uh, leukocytes, sort of white uh, blood cells. Uh, there's various types of white blood cells, one being leukocytes, and they're going to look to see if there's anything happening there. Um, obviously, they're looking at other types of uh, labs that could be indicative of this type of um, infection. Um, and it's um, higher viral load and for a longer duration in the lower respiratory tract to compare with the upper respiratory tract. So it seems like it can go into both uh, upper and lower. So it's not one or the other. So that's not good because <laughs> it's more, could be more, um, obviously more prevalent. Um, and there's just obviously different things about how long it can last and how long you can be um, infectious to other people. Uh, there's no specific treatment. Um, it's just supportive management. So just making, making sure, like, if you're feeling uh, dehydrated, like she talked about getting fluids, that could be potentially it. Um, and just, obviously, you know, infection prevention, which is why I said that she needs to be masked up and doing proper hand washing and things, uh, sanitizing in the home and things that would start to be less... Um, you know, start to manage this, but there's nothing specific because it's viral. So there's, you know, you can't give an antibiotic. There's nothing of that if it is a viral infection. That's where people are always mistaken. Okay. Now, if she was getting these uh, nasal sores, you know, one of the things that I read, um, but other than just like, don't leave, leave your nose alone, <laughs> was that um, it can get uh, from viral infections. Um, and they mentioned some here from an upper respiratory infection, which we saw that MERS obviously can affect both upper and lower. Um, it talked about it becoming from a bacterial source. Uh, but one of the things which uh, Foodie has talked about is di obviously we know she has uh, unmanaged, uncontrolled type 2 diabetes, um, obviously if she's not eating and she is a diabetic type two and her blood sugars are potentially going more hypoglycemic for her, that could be potentially why her energy is decreasing. Her diet really needs to be very simple. If she's having any symptoms of nausea, usually I would say have a very limited diet. I don't think berries are a good idea. What often would be recommended is something that is gentle on the gastric system. So it's very limited. So this sort of idea of being healthy is not kind of the area to go. It's what's known as the brat diet. It's bananas. And you should love this rice, apples, and toast. So it's really <laughs> very bland. 
and you want to sort of keep that going. Um, and saltine crackers really are very good for abating nausea. And so it's a very, you know, really you should kind of like that. So it's kind of the antithesis of what I would usually recommend. Obviously, with you being type 2 diabetic, you do want to speak to a healthcare provider before even having that type of diet that would generally be re uh, recommended for somebody with symptoms of nausea. Um, so you're a little bit different, um, but that would usually be the recommended diet a lot of the times, just to kind of take the, it's gentle on the system. So, you know, obviously they can examine it. There are some antibiotics. If it's that, if it's something happening, it's just a nasal sore, what they're causing nasal vestibulitis, infection inside your nostrils. <laughs> excessive nose blowing or picking. <laughs> so anyway, all right, let's just get over to this idea real fast of foodie potentially um, sad fishing real fast. And I think I want to start, I don't want to make this video too long, obviously, um, but foodie unfortunately is a classic sad fisher. Again, I'm going to make sure all these things are linked down below. So if you want to read these articles, because I'm just going to kind of quickly run through kind of the highlights of it. Um, and I spoke about the fact that when she had, um, this is on another channel, mentioned in a live stream that, you know, could she come back doing a little bit of sad fishing? We saw that very, you know, performative in my mind. This is my opinion only with the sort of black, which we know is a color that symbolizes death, it symbolizes funerals, it symbolizes the end of something, it's, you know, it's got all these different connotations, it's certainly not birth, life, you know, any of these things. Um, I did mention a little bit about, I believe that she's kind of going through the five stages of grief with her own uh, reflection on her health, and she seems to be doing at this time a lot of bargaining, uh, when she's saying, no, I'm just going to eat healthier. I understand. I'm sure she's gone through the denial. I'm sure she's been angry that we not seen, but maybe those rages are part of her anger really about her and her health. And then when channels and commentary point out her health, she, you know, gets upset. I don't think she is covering for a channel strike. I don't think she's done anything. I know she has used her other channel, uh, Chantel and Salah to strike other channels. And so I don't know what the repercussions have been on her own just uh, personal channel with Foodie Beauty. Anyway, let's take a quick look at this uh, sad fishing. I think I might do a live stream talking about this a little bit more. I'm not sure, but we, um, you know, I think about it, but maybe in the context, if she releases anything else, we'll talk about it a little bit more. But basically, uh, it's the idea of attention getting or or is it a genuine call for help? So this is sad. Fad fishing is posting emotional or dramatic personal content to gain sympathy or attention from the online community. So it's very much a specific action that happens now in this very uh, social media driven world. And it's exactly what seems to have happened here with uh, Chantel's post regarding her recent illness and feeling sick and tired. Uh, they speak of it being a very new term, which uh, it is, but it's obviously we always have these new words that start to become part of a popular lexicon, and sad fishing is one of them. And it is sympathy on and offline is not a new behavior there. And so you can always think of Aesop's fables and the boy who cried wolf, and that's what always, I, I think I've even said this in some of my live streams, that she's definitely like crying wolf. And that he was trying to use sad fishing techniques to trick the villagers into always coming to their help. You know, like I'm sure Foodie would love to get more members, money sent, anything that she's going to need to be able to address her doctor's care because she's not been able to produce any content in order to um, be able to really offset any expensive medical costs that she could incur in Kuwait. And if they say she needs to go back home to Canada, she could be on the hook potentially for medical costs on a flight back home, which would be enormous. Okay, so 
it is starting to be used obviously a lot more frequently um, and people are being accused of doing this. Uh, and we are obviously sort of considering, you know, is this a technique that Chantel uses um, to have attention seeking? And, you know, people can say that it's used to criticize or belittle other people's content online. Um, and so um, it's whether it's sad fishing or not. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like the term narcissism. It's being used quite frequently. And so it's difficult to know um, if somebody is sad fishing. So, you know, this article, and I don't want to get too much into it, I think it's important just to kind of point out the term sad fishing and kind of what it means. Um, but obviously, it's, you know, they talk a little bit about, you know, wanting attention as normal. Um, but with sad fishing, it describes a technique of manipulation, which we've spoken about. Uh, again, this is not treating or diagnosing this person. Chantel and her using manipulation techniques. I think I've even brought up some other videos um, in order um, to get favor from her audience. Um, they may um, or knowingly exaggerate or to sort of have a, you know, actually make up going through very hard times to get notice from the audience or anyone around them. And so if, you know, obviously... When someone labels a post as sad fishing, it is subjective judgment made by the reader, not the person posting. So whoever's looking at the content, like myself, whoever, uh, and it's my judgment, you know, in my opinion, that I'm the one who's saying I feel this is sad fishing. Is, sa is really sad fishing a little bit in this video? Potentially. Is she potentially unwell? Uh, yeah. <laughs> she does not have great health. Um, don't know. Um, sometimes I think she may actually, you know, it's hard to know how much she exaggerates about it and how much she does not and hides from the audience to sort of hide how really sick she could potentially be. So it's hard to know which way she goes. And that's, you know, for somebody who's supposed to have to have an authentic vlogging channel, it's not a good look. Um, so there, they talk a little bit about that and maybe their lonely feeling that they want connection with the audience. And uh, that's why they're putting out all this emotional distress. And she was very performative. And it's, you know, there's so many different reasons why people could sad fish. It could be that they are miserable and um, is, you know, and appearing to be so is to actually trick or con purely and simple for that reason. And the difficulty is that it does work because most of us and most good people who are normal we are empathetic and it is able to appeal to those emotional um, sides of people. And so, um, and but no one likes being duped. Uh, manipulating is a toxic behavior. And if it's done enough, it will make people upset. And, you know, people don't like to feel vulnerable. Um, and so... It's, you know, if somebody's been doing that and you feel like you've been manipulated by this person, then you could actually devalue that person's, you know, post like foodie at this post and say she's absolutely out here sad fishing. So it's just kind of interesting. Obviously, they talk a little bit here. Like, like I said, this is a long article. I don't want to go on, but a little bit about it and cancel culture. Um, and there's always sort of talk about, you know, these creators, uh, you know, it's better to watch them through reaction channels so that you're not sort of giving them views or them content. Uh, but maybe we should just not watch these people at all, which has been happening a lot recently in the community that have reacted to Foodie um, just because of uh, things like she does like this. And then obviously just any type of things like talking about, you know, feeling sick and tired is going to get attention, you know, but obviously doing this, you know, there are benefits and dangers to having this type of behavior. And they talk about this in regard to social media. Um, and so how, if you did see somebody who was sad fishing, um, how do you respond to it? And they talk about this being a friend. And obviously, you know, Foodie is just a creator. And we do wonder if she uses a lot of things in order to gain sympathy from her audience. And so uh, they say, obviously, to reach out privately, which obviously I think more her family or people that know her closer and maybe who see her problematic content should be the ones to let her know. 
um, if there really is any merit to what she's saying about her health, um, but in a private way. Um, and then that's up to them. You know, we don't want too much sympathy. Um, you just show empathy rather than sympathy. Um, like I can understand that must be bad, you know, rather than the perpetuating of the poor me, you know, you don't want to feed into that. Um, you know, so that's kind of what you want to avoid. So they just talk about how people should manage it. There's some references here also that are very recent um, that talk about digital health practices, mental health, um, and things that I find very interesting. So yes, that is always something to think about when we're considering Chantel. Anyway, I did want to make this, this is going to go out exclusively first, um, to my members, and then it will become a video, uh, out to the public. So those of you who are Best Vibes members, I do really appreciate your support. Uh, it enables me to help continue to make this content, especially as I start to work full time through grad school and still have an opportunity to use uh, even more and more my professional education in regards to highlighting how health is used in social media, especially with content creators. And I hope that I can catch you the next time and everybody take care. Wash your hands. Don't get close to camels. Just be safe out there and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.